Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Gen 5 file for a camshaft. This could be a car, this could be a truck, and we're going to piggyback off of the file that we made earlier that was the stock to bolt-ons file that we set up already uh, that you can go back and watch, and I'll, uh, I'll put it in here in the card so that you can go back and watch it and see it. Um, this is going to be a file for just a, uh, it could be a middle-of-the-road camshaft, like a stage 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this would apply to a smaller camshaft, a medium or a big uh, cam just based on the, um, you know, just by inflating the numbers. Uh, but we're going to go here to my stock tune file repository and go down to, I think it was a 2015 truck. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. 2015 Silverado 62 Gen 5 truck bolt on file. Um, so there's a lot of confusion on the internet about what do you adjust? What do you change uh, when you add a camshaft to these things? Um, and the nice thing about the Gen 5s is that it's pretty easy to get them to idle and to behave correctly. The only thing that you're really going to, uh, that's going to be different is going to be the addition of the torque model, the virtual torque. And we're going to talk about um, how to go through that. But there's a lot of tables in here that people will tell you to go in and alter and to change. And whether it's a Gen 5, a 4, a 3, it doesn't matter. I'm always going to tell you to change the least amount possible. So we're going to start here in our uh, general. We don't have to touch anything. Idle. The first thing we're going to do is go to the base set point, and we're just going to add globally 200 RPM to this entire uh, table. So we're going to say that this is like a, a BTR, or a Texas Speed Stage 2 you know, cam, whatever you want to call it, something that's going to play uh, well with a stock torque converter. So when we're at temperature, we're going to be somewhere uh, in here. You know, so 750 to 800 is going to be just fine. And we can go back later and adjust this. You want to make sure that you add it to your cold temperatures as well. Again, where I am on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, we're never going to get down here. So this is, you know, we're usually somewhere in this range. But um, if you were, you'd want to make sure that this area has enough uh, commanded idle RPM. Rolling idle, we can set this whole table to like 750. This is what I would probably command. Um, we're gonna go down here to the startup and park neutral. And I'm just going to add again, 200 to the entire table. There again, these numbers might be kind of inflated uh, for your taste, but there again, we're never gonna get there. So I'm not too worried about it. Here's our at temperature uh, regions. So, and again, we can go back and dial this in later, but for right now, we're just trying to get this thing up and running and idling. It's a brand new motor, uh, we're assuming. Uh, we're gonna copy and paste this to the in gear table as well. Uh, we're assuming this is maybe a new build, and so we just want to make sure this thing starts up and runs and idles, and um, and this will actually do more than that. It'll it'll get you up and running pretty good. Um, the first uh, stop in the uh, on this trip, adaptive idle speed control. Um, a lot of folks say to go in here and adjust this stuff. Um, you know, a lot of the, especially for more of a cam, a choppy cam sound. I'll tell you, with the Truck Norris and the Chopper cams and all that stuff that play well with the, the stock torque converters, you don't need to do anything with these. Just leave them alone. You don't, you don't have to touch them. It's pretty simple. Um, under the idle torque section, this is one where some will say to come in here and add that same uh, 200 RPM to this uh, desired RPM axes. Um, you'll see people change you know, stuff in here. Don't do it. Um, I've done plenty of these Gen 5s. You don't need to alter any of that stuff. Same thing with external load. People will tell you to go in here and to right click to your uh, column axes and to edit the uh, the row axes rather and uh, and edit these, you know, add however much, you know, you added to your idle set point base. You don't need to do that. Leave this alone. You don't, you don't need to touch it. It's going to be just fine. Even in a big cam with a big converter, you know, or a power adder combination, which we'll talk about later, you don't have to touch that stuff. Okay. Airflow. Um, we've already put this thing in math only mode, but you are going to want to come to the base airflow table, which is basically like your base running airflow. If you're a, you know, a adept in the gen three or gen four, um, somewhere down here, you know, this is not going to be quite enough. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just add in like five grams a second, um, to this entire table just to get us up and running. Um, cranking VE again, a lot of folks will tell you, you can come in here and you can, Chop 15% out of it, that's that's fine, it's up to you. Um, a lot of folks will modify this split CLO. I never have found a reason to. So I've done plenty of these trucks and cars and I've, I've never had to, to do it. Um, 
As we move right along, uh, make sure that our max throttle opening is set to 100, which it already is. Variable cam. Uh, you're either going to be using a limiter, like a four degree limiter or a complete lockout. We can set this to none. Um, and then we can also go into our cam desired angle and just set these to zero. Um, just kind of as a extra step. Um, some of the Brian Tooley cams do come with uh, car, you know, data cards for this watt desired angle. Um, but for right now, we're just going to set this to zero and I'm also going to set the use oil pressure um, to disable um, everything else in, uh, on this side is going to be just fine don't need to touch anything pressure control turbocharger supercharger don't need to mess with anything there fuel um, the only thing that uh, we, can, we can make sure this is already set this this vehicle is set up for 10% ethanol the only thing that we can maybe do just if you wanted to is you could come down here to this SOI base and we could come down here and, you know, 350, 360 in this wide open throttle region, you know, will yield you a little bit more horsepower. Um, so we can go to like the 5200, copy that, paste that down here, and then we will fill that in. And then you can come back to this area, maybe in the 0.96 uh, gram cylinder air mass and 5200. You could come down here and you can add, say, 5% and then you could blend some of this up. Um, you know, realistically you could get away with not doing this right now. Um, you know, there's no reason to think the fuel system is going to be, you know, running out of itself. Uh, but you know, um, that's something you could do. You could not do, I would do it. Um, you know, and you could, you could get into the three fifties and three sixties. Um, but, uh, yeah, oxygen sensors, long-term fuel trims have already been disabled. Don't need to touch anything in open loop. Power enrichment's already taken care of. Temperature control. We'll assume we've got cats. Uh, if you don't, you can set it to disable. Um, everything over here. You could bump your rev limiter up, uh, say to 6300. Just set this whole deal to 6300. Um, that's fine. Resume, we could set to 6250. Everything else is going to be okay. Excel threshold is already taken care of. I mean, fuel saving, DOD is obviously disabled. Flex fuel, uh, it looks like it's got a virtual sensor. Um, you also want to make sure in Spark that we come over here to the variable cam control and we zero this table out um, so that everything's coming from our high octane table. And honestly, this is going to work just fine for right now. Obviously, you know, somewhere over in here, we're going to end up putting some more timing in this. You know, you could bump, you could bump this up by maybe two degrees um, if you wanted to. For now, um, I would recommend getting your fueling uh, lined out first. We could kind of blend this in like so. Seventeen degrees is probably going to be okay. You know, so if you're anything below that, it's probably on the little low side. But better safe than sorry. Over here to the low octane, and we'll just yank, paste that, and we'll yank eight degrees out of it. Um, that's going to be okay. Um, so now everything else is already set up. There's a we're, we're, we're going to come back to this minimum spark table. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about this this virtual torque model. So um, you're probably going to have to use the beta version of HP Tuners uh, of the editor when you come up here to edit to virtual torque. This is where you're going to be looking is this air mass um, or the E85 air mass if you're using ethanol. But essentially, this is the torque model at different spark uh, degree points as to, um, you know, where, uh, what the, the predicted engine torque is, okay? So we're now making less engine torque because of the camshaft down low. And you'll see this in your scanner and you'll have uh, negative spark, you know, you're, you're not spark retard, not knock retard, but you'll see under spark advance, it'll be in the negative numbers. And you don't want to do that. You want to get it closer to zero. Okay. A factory truck or car is going to be operating in the zero range, um, give or take a degree or two. And so, you know, what you would want to do is make sure your link selections is checked. So they're all uh, selected together and you would come in this, uh, this is RPM up here. Okay. And, uh, this is cylinder air mass. Okay. But the decimals just moved 
you know, so what you would do is come over here and we would do something like this and you would chop 25% out of it. Um, or you could remove in foot pounds, you could remove 25. Um, this is going to be a fine tuning method and this is going to be the correct method. The little bit easier method from the get go is under this torque model general section, this, uh, air mass a, this is going to be that same, uh, table that we were just in. And what we're focused on is this zero uh, intake cam angle. Um, you could do it to all of these, but just for right now, we're just going to start right here. And what I would do is come in here and do a 0.75 multiply. And you'll notice what it chopped, what it chopped out of it. I'll do it again. Okay. And this would be a really good starting point before you even fire the vehicle up just to go, go with this from right here. And if you really had negative spark, you could go, you know, as, as it's idling, as it's warmed up, you could go in here again and chop even more out of it. But what you would probably want to do from that point is you would go back into the, and you'll see here that it's changed. And what you would do from here is you would go in and you notice that it, it, it removed it out of the entire area, you know? So what you would probably do from there is you would go in and you might subtract minus 25 and hit plus. It's not going to let me change it because uh, I'm not using the beta version. Um, I might even interpolate this, which again, it's not going to let me do because it's the beta version. Um, the other time where this is going to be important, um, you only need to really change these virtual torque tables um, at idle and then up top where it's the vehicle is making substantially more power. You know, so you would have to come in here, you know, say if you're in the 20 degree range at 5,200 and you would have to add 50 or 60 foot pounds, you know, this, that, and the other to make sure that your torque model is in line. That way your automatic transmission is going to shift well. Um, so that's what I would do there. So once you get that, uh, the, the loss section, we don't even touch that. Once we get the um, spark, you know, registering in the zero range when it's idling and we've got the idle kind of where we want. Um, and maybe we've even driven the vehicle a little bit and gotten some of the short term fuel trims lined out. I would go back to this minimum spark table, which has been one of my favorite spots lately. Um, and I would, I would yank some of this timing, um, you know, out. So, you know, down here, you know, is it going to pull, you know, all the way down into negative 23 degrees? Probably not, but that's going to be pretty aggressive. So what I would do is probably go in here and add maybe 12 degrees. That way it just doesn't have nearly as much authority to pull that much. Okay. And I'm going to say down here, negative seven is going to be my number. Um, and you can, uh, again, you don't want to use, you don't want to use this area right here as a crutch to get the vehicle to idle. This is for gen four and five is what I tell people. Um, you know, you do want to be able to get your torque model lined out without this table being adjusted, then go back in and set this to where it can't swing way, you know, way, way, way low. And then right here, we might just do like a, a smooth and gen fives do have a long-term table, which you would want to, um, you would want to set this to. So this would be a really good starting point. Um, peak torque. We've probably already bumped this up, you know, uh, driver demand. I cannot believe, I, uh, uh, peak torque. Again, this is going to be, you know, the predicted amount of engine torque. Um, if you make more than what's here, it's going to close the throttle blade. Um, the other area is going to be driver demand here in torque management. Okay. Um, you definitely want to go down here to this uh, 86 and 100% accelerator pedal position. And with this new camshaft and add 10%. Okay. And then blend down just a little bit. Um, and these driver demand tables, you only need to worry about these bottom few rows. You do not need to change any of these negative numbers, leave like all of this like it is. Okay. And then do that to, um, all three of these. So we're going to go in and add 10%. And again, if you are adding a camshaft, if you're adding forced induction, you're going to be coming in here and, and increasing these numbers another 10% or another 15%. So this is going to be pretty much where I get started on a cammed gen five car or truck file. Um, I've had good luck doing it this way. And now the vehicle is ready to go out and fire it up and warm it up and break it in and start looking at our long, our short term fuel trims and driving it and getting a wide man sensor in it, making sure our throttle blades not closing. If it is, we may be going in here and we made another 
5%, 7%, so on and so forth. So hope you guys have found this video uh, informative and helpful. And like, comment, subscribe down below on what you want to see next. And uh, we'll have some more of these Gen 5 videos coming out. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.